As you're all aware by now, Duterte has won his place within the Filipino government. But what's important here is that there appears to be a division in the, the Communist Party of the Philippines, a pro and anti CSUN faction. A two-line struggle is occurring within the upper and mid-levels of the Communist Party of the Philippines. One faction of the party which is strongest at the mid-level of the party supports the continuation of the people's war in the country. The other faction, under the leadership of the founder of the party, Jose Maria Sison, is actively moving towards capitulation and surrendering to the bourgeois state under the promise of concessions. Some of you will remember that back in 2014 there was a series of high-profile arrests of Maoists in the Philippines. The most prominent among them were Benito and Wil uh, uh, Wilma Diamzon, chairman and general secretary of the party. It is believed that they and the faction they represented were hardliners in favor of continuing the armed struggle. Since their arrest, their, their factions seem to have lost ground and the Sisonites, the opposite faction, want to capitulate to the government and end the armed struggle and transform into a parliamentary party have gained control. Many of you will already be aware that Duterte, the recent winner of the Philippine election, has offered the CPP prominent positions in his government, specifically the ministries of agriculture, social welfare, and infrastructure. He has also offered the integration of the new People's Army into the Philippine Armed Forces. The Sisonites likely see Duterte's election as an opportunity to capitulate under favorable conditions. In other words, to surrender the revolutionary struggle while saving face and passing off their capitulation to the bourgeois state as a kind of minor victory. We've surrendered this government. We've surrendered to this government, but look, it's not a total loss. You know, we've won you some nice reforms in exchange for this. Although it's too soon to tell if he will follow through on his pre-election promises, Jose Mari Sison certainly seems to hope he will. He said, I now look forward to further conversation with President Duterte to arrange an immediate ceasefire, release all of the political prisoners, my return home, and acceleration of the peace negotiations. Let us have a goal, a government of national unity, peace, and development. Well, Jose Maricison sees himself as been trying to push the image that Duterte is some kind of Filipino Hugo Chavez in his own words, and has the the reality really couldn't be further from the truth. Duterte is a blatant third positionist autocrat with a crude strongman attitude. Earlier this year, Duterte publicly joked about his desire to rape Jacqueline Hamill, an Australian missionary who had been gang raped and then killed in Davao in 1989. Under his leadership as mayor of Davao City, death squads many out extrajudicial punishments to suspected criminals, drug addicts, and dealers have killed at least a thousand people, including children. At least 12 of those people were killed in cases of mistaken identity. Duterte has admitted to endorsing the Davao death squads and even to killing people himself. He's even said that as president, he would pardon himself. He has even hinted that he has plans to bring these death squads out to a national level. In a televised interview last year, he warned criminals, I will really kill you. That 1,000 will become 100,000 and I will fatten the fish in Manila Bay. That's where I will throw your bodies. He has threatened to dissolve the Philippine Congress should the government interfere with his plans. It should be clear to anybody who looks into this guy, his political theory, and his history of statements that this man is no Philippine Hugo Chavez. His politics are far closer and perhaps even go beyond those of the late Philippine dictator Ferdinand Marcos. Although once again, it's too early to tell if Duterte will follow through on his campaign promises given that the election itself is just barely over. If the Sisonites do continue their capitulation to him, it's very likely that there will be some kind of split in the party. Although the Sisonites are in control of the leadership at the mid and lower levels of the party, there are a lot of people who want to continue the armed struggle. Not just poor rural and urban workers and activists either, who are certainly going to feel betrayed if the People's War suddenly ends. There's a whole generation of communists who have given everything to the cause and who have based their lives, their livelihoods, to the service of the Communist Party and the NPA, particularly at mid-cadre levels, officers and captains of the New People's Army, and etc. These people will have likely nowhere to turn if the armed struggle is ended, and there is likely going to be a very fierce opposition from these mid- and lower-level cadre in the party. It seems that the Sisonites are very worried about this. 
one of their primary concerns will undoubtedly be to keep party unity. In at least the last couple of years particularly, they have been really heavily pumping out the cult of personality around Jose Maria Cison and throwing out lots of Maoist rhetoric. This shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. Typically, Maoist parties will bolster a cult of personality around the leader during turbulent times or times of great change, whether positive or negative, in order to build unity based on loyalty around the leadership. It seems like this is an effort on behalf of the Cisones to preempt any possible split in the party following a massive change in direction, as in giving up their armed struggle may do. It is important that we as Marxists, than ever, more than ever, that we be critical of both ourselves and those we admire and respect the most. We should never fall into thinking that any individual or group is infallible, and we should never follow or cheerlead blindly. It should be clear that Jose Maria Cison, who leads the Communist Party of the Philippines today, is not the same Cison who bravely led the Filipino people down the revolutionary path of decades ago. It is unacceptable that the Philippine Revolution go the way of the revolutionary struggle in Nepal. To our Filipino comrades, the words of Mao ring true today. If the Philippine Revolution is to be saved, they must be prepared to bombard the headquarters. Thank you for watching. Why don't you go ahead, rate, comment, subscribe, and share on various social media. And if you want, you can head over to my Patreon page and show your support. Or you can head over to the MRN Bookstore and check out some of the latest books available.